So we're gonna videotape uh, Greg putting the blade in. Mm -hmm. On this saw, the 1316S, unlock the doors, pull open this blade guide. We're gonna move the, the belt for the blade brush. We're gonna move that out of the way. On both the blade guides, we unscrew the this knob just until it stops. Release the tension for five, six. Well, at least six turns. Just enough to get the blade over the flange on the wheel. At the halfway point, we're gonna bring the two together and hold it right in the middle like that. That's the safest place to hold it. If you put it on the floor, you put the Put the teeth up. Now, when this blade comes out of the box, it's a 50-50 chance that the teeth are pointing in the correct direction. You want to open this carefully, and you want to do this with gloves. You don't run the saw with gloves on, but you work with the blade with gloves. And now we're going to check to make sure that the, the teeth are going toward the motor end of the saw. It may have come out of the box like this. Now the teeth are pointing in the wrong direction. They don't cut very well on the back edge. <laughs> Flip the blade inside out, and you never assume that it's going in the right direction. So the teeth are pointing toward the stationary vice jaw. When this saw gets wired up for the first time, a, a three-phase saw, this is 463 phase, you have to make sure that the, the phase has the motor going in the right direction. So the blade is pulled into the drive wheel. Around the wheel. Perfect. Always easier with two people. Then you just twist the blade, push it up into the blade guides. Like that, in between the rollers. Close the carbides, the spring-loaded carbides. And it's either all the way in or all the way out. There's no adjustment. It's sort of in the right place. So the next thing I do is just sl slowly start to tighten the blade. And what I'm looking for here is to get the blade in the right position on the band wheels. So I reach in and pull the blade so the back edge of the blade is up against the flange. There we go. Now, let me check that side. You don't just tension it all the way the first time. You want to make sure that the the blade is up against the flange on the wheel. There it goes. Now, with this tensioning mechanism, we're going to turn the T-handle and tighten up the blade. It's going to come to a hard stop. It's calibrated to provide us the correct tension when it comes to a hard stop. You won't be able to turn it anymore. Guard here. Blade brush belt on. The blade brush is adjusted so that the brush just barely touches the teeth. That's all it's got to do. Now what we want to do is make sure the blade is where it ought to be. The back edge of the blade should be right up next to the flange, but not dragging it. I encourage people to check that every time they put a blade on a saw. Run it for a couple minutes, you should spot check it. So now we're all set, blades mounted, the carbide guides are closed, we're ready to go. The one myth that we did get rid of was uh, that's been around for a uh, hundred years is that you run the blade at a slower speed and the blade people said uh-uh, you, you, you keep it at the correct speed, but you just feed it gently on the first few cuts. And my experience has been, uh, when I put a new blade on a machine, and during the break-in process, uh, with gentle feed on the first couple of cuts, um, it, the blade actually gets quieter. And that tells me something's happening. I don't yeah. know what's happening, but something's happening. The other, the other evidence I have that's pretty much irrefutable is we've got customers all the time for decades that have said, I don't know what blade was on the saw the first time, 
but I want one of those. And we quickly learned that the blade that was on the first time was broken in when we do our test cuts and they haven't been breaking in their blades. And so you break in a blade properly and it lasts twice as long. The one thing to remember is that this is a compromised cut because when the blade's cutting through the side wall, you've got two thin pieces. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure, you know, how is that gonna work with the, the coarse pitch and this particular band speed. And then when you get to the bottom, now you're cutting across a wide piece. So you've got a, a whole group of teeth that are engaged and that's a whole different formula. So we have to compromise. And, and the way to do it is with a, a buttress tooth on the blade and a high band speed. And that's the whole challenger design. Yep. You know, across the flats, through the side wall. It'll, it'll withstand that impact. Uh, when we're going through the sidewall. Yeah, no, we like this blade because a lot of fab shops, variety of materials, yep. they don't take the time to change the blade. No. So this is more, as, as, as close as you can get to that one size fits all. If you set the saw up properly, it'll give you a broader range of materials you can cut with one blade if you set up the saw properly. And the biggest one of those is to make sure the saw head is not heavier than it needs to be. This is an important measurement. So I open the feed rate and let the saw head fall until the, until the scale stops moving. And that's about 15 pounds. This is gonna put about 60 pounds to 70 pounds of force on the blade. When you do the math, we've got a lever. And, and if I measure 15 out here, it's going to put about 70 pounds on the blade. And 15 works just right for this saw. I could, I could get away with less, but I don't need more. Virtually every scissor type saw has some type of counterbalance spring. They're virtually all adjustable. And most of the trouble I see, I'm doing this for almost 30 years, most of the trouble is because the head is heavier than it needs to be. That wrecks the blade, it makes the cut crooked, it beats up the gearbox, the list goes on. The teeth per inch and the speed of the blade are related. The three variables are the number of teeth on the blade, the speed of the blade, and the downforce. Those are the three variables, there's no others. Today we've done a test cut for a customer that's cutting rectangle tubing and we made the cut in various configurations and feeds and speeds and even tried different blades. We welcome you to contact the factory here at Wellsaw and we can help you with test cuts, we can help you with speeds and feeds, we can make blade recommendations. We're a smaller company so we can give you complete advice. But uh, any questions you've got, call us here at the factory and we can help solve any bandsaw problem you've got. We can point you in the right direction.